It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Recapping week 14 in the NFL in such a lovely and fun way as we like to do with our GBU. Let's have a little fun, shall we? It's Bill. It's Dave. Gridiron 360. Let's start out with the good. As we always do. All right. You start us out. So, number one. Return of the Rings in Gotham. Tell me what we got there. Well, you know. It's your boy. Like Daniel Jones. Like I told you earlier, he's he's our guy. I think he'll get better next year. And You're right, he's a Giants quarterback. You yeah, said that before yeah, they drafted that him that you liked he's him. He's that is guy. That, he's, uh, he's like Eli Part 2 in a little bit of a way. If he some, guy. somehow doesn't work out, then, like I said, after next year, then Trevor's coming out. So, you know. <laughs> he's already earmarking uh, Clemson Part All 2. Right, so, uh, but due to a high ankle sprain and look, looking to be out, Two to four Probably weeks. the rest, rest of the season. season. No need, Makes sense. No need to put him out there. Yep. You know, at this point, we are we are really in the Chase Young business. Yeah. Well, and he got the right experience. He's not. It's not killing him to miss this. No. So um, Eli is given the nod to start last night on the road. Monday night football at the Link in Philly. Look good, my friend. It, he it's did. funny. He did. You know, it's a, a little time. Just kind of analyzing on the sideline with the with, with the headpiece listening to the play calls and watching it from the sideline and looking at the surface pro and you know kind of you know what is Jones doing good where where could he have done better you know from that perspective and having a little break and then coming back out like he did he had a little little hop in his step the yeah. old guy well it's probably nice to be reasonably healthy for probably the this first time true. in many years this is true um you know we came out on fire you know, we go into halftime 17-3. Uh, we talked about it in the uh, recap earlier that the the fans were booing the Eagles off the field, and it really was, you know, all behind the arm of Eli because Saquon was trying to get going. I, I actually do think it was one of his better-looking efforts thus far this season, but there's something wrong with him. That, since that he had that high ankle sprain, he needs an offseason, hopefully, because he just didn't have that pop. Now, the field was nasty, but the youngster from Auburn once again showing up, not just showing that he's a target Daniel Jones likes to throw to, but Eli got to get a little taste as he... Wow, I mean, he threw that one, what was it? It was like, a, let's see, that one bomb he threw to him for a touchdown right before the yep. end of the half, um, answering the field and Eli goal. and bomb has not been something we've said no, a lot over the last couple of years, so it's nice to see. But in doing so, actually, earlier in the game, he had a pass to Sterling Shepard. It was late in the first quarter, and with that, he moved ahead of Roethlisberger for seventh place all-time passing yards. And then later, with the touch... Which is interesting, same draft class. That's right, and then know. later... Later, that's, uh, let's see, it was 56,545 yards. Then later, he throws the touchdown to Darius Slayton, giving him 394, and that moved him in front of Roethlisberger as well. Interesting. For sixth place on the uh, all-time touchdown record there. So, uh, And speaking of draft class, Philip Rivers is currently, or he moved into seventh. Rivers is in sixth place on uh on that that list so um it was good to see eli come back um unfortunately it was in a losing effort as we didn't come out of locker room and philly did i didn't think they did anything spectacular they ran the ball very well which was very basic and we couldn't stop it uh, my man dexter lawrence ha- looked great in there but he was having a problem with the run stopping game they were do- they were double teaming the way we were lined up they were using both their guards and tackles on our d tackles yeah, I mean, we well, just don't have the, the edge. That's the, if there's a strength on your defense, that's it. So yeah. that's what they so, went after. But, you know, what? one thing I want to say, I've never been like this enormous Eli Manning fan, but I've never hated him or anything. I just, you know, he's a giant, and I remember old school Bears. His giants kind of always have a little nudge in me. But um, this is a guy, he's got two rings, which is more than most quarterbacks in the NFL can say. And I was in New Jersey living there at the time when – McAdoo made the Macadou. horrible, horrible call of benching Eli. Well, and that, yeah, 
near the end that of the season. Bro- it, that broke it, his, his streak, uh, streak, his game he streak. He also had that he was right. He was third all time. It was Favre. It was. Brady maybe and then it was Peyton and then he moved in front of Peyton for the start streak you know because obviously Peyton retired but they did say last night he is still one of the longest standing start streaks without an injury because that obviously yeah, was yeah. Due to and, him and the whole thing sacked. was it was done really horribly and unlike this year it would have made sense because you had a young quarterback. Yeah. They put him in for a throwaway in. And uh, we Gino had Smith. a guy that we had drafted that we could have gotten third a look string. At. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We and he ended up and playing because Geno Smith was no yeah, good. Yeah, but in Davis Webb, and yeah. that was. The, but the whole that was the slap in the face. Uh, is I, we know what Geno Smith was. If you're gonna bench Eli at that time, at least bench him and see what we got in the yeah. in, in the, the Davis Webb kid. They they didn't. They put Geno in, and that's a slap in the face. Now you you. T- Tend to, I, I think this is his last year. You think he may come back, but either way, what I like is he's going to get a chance to play some divisional matchups, which is a nice way for him to yeah, go out. Yeah, he'll get the Eagles at home yep. at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, he gets the Redskins, I believe, too, yep. right? Yep. So, so that, that'll be a little good. bit of a fun ride, you know, and again, he, he deserves to go out the right way. This is a guy, I mean, I, I don't think anybody, until you live up there um, in that area and catch what is one of the, the – which is the largest media market in the world – and see the scrutiny that goes on in those in that market for a kid like him. And let's be honest, he's little goober. He, him, and his brother are yeah, goobers, but, man, but they're great. They goobers. were the family was there. Peyton yeah. was, was. They showed him the game in the background, round up in the box, and he, yep. he was behind a lot of folks. Like Peyton was into the game, and he was into the game for his brother. And I really yeah. love to see yeah. that. It wasn't that he had any hatred for Philly or anything. He just really no. wanted. And I, Peyton I showed love up that. for a lot of his games on bye weeks. I, I know. And stuff. I, re- a good I just. I, I really, really love. Like that, yeah. I thought it was cool because it wasn't like he was dancing around, smiling, having cocktails. Like he was dialed in. He yep. was riding the emotions with Eli out yeah. there. And, yep. and I'll be honest with you, man. I mean, we didn't get a check chance in overtime. Our defense didn't hold up. They drive down the field and score right at the end. We didn't, you know, we just knelt it out with the last few seconds and pushed it to OT. They won the toss, drove down the field, scored a touchdown. Defense couldn't hold up on the run again, and they won the game. But I would have loved to have seen them maybe get a field goal. Or, or, or lack thereof, and, and give him a shot for a game winner because yeah. he's done a lot of those. Yeah. It, was, it was cool to see him return. I got to be honest with you, I'm kind of interested to see because the best athlete in TV commercials all time is his brother. It will be interesting to put a couple of oh, commercials he'll totally together. be in there. <laughs> you know, so, look, our, our defense in that game was just, it sucks they didn't play up to par the second yep. half because he looked good. And I mean, like, look, Ertz was eating us alive and they, they were down to nobody. I mean, we forgot, hurt. we forgot to talk about that in the recap when, you, you know, we were calling, I think I called Dallas, you called the Eagles. I mean, Alshon is gone for the season, I believe. And, and Lane Johnson their big tackle could be gone for the season. He yep. went down that game, and, and he the backup, just came back. Too. My tie, who's had to back him up because of him just coming back, has not really done a good job. So, yep. um, but it is a shame that they were that the, our defensive coordinator sucks and couldn't figure out a way to cover the one guy really we needed to in Zach Ertz, and uh, again couldn't give Eli a chance to come back. But I digress. Let's move on to the good number two: free piggyback rides. Anybody for a free piggyback ride? Free piggyback rides. Piggy, Who, who's giving them? Who's giving them? Uh, Mark Bavaro, otherwise known as Rambo. I'm sorry, this isn't 1989. This is 2019. And in 2019, that man is none other than Jorge Skittles. Skittles. George Kittle is a friggin' beast. He is a man on a mission when he wants to be, man. So tell us about this one. So, as we've talked about, and we're going to talk about a little bit more, Mm -hmm. but... uh, a little bit of a shootout in New Orleans it between between San Francisco. Build is the best game so far this year, and I I got to believe in what I've seen. I, I so much have uh, started watching it on my uh, Game Pass to rewatch. There is a play. George Kittle gets the ball to the left, and it's at the end of the game. It yep. was in a crunch time. It was it they was down there. To get downfield. They had to, they they it was they were trading scores, yeah. and at so, this point, I think Sam Fran was behind. Now, ask me how, but he's running free. Yep. Catches the ball, catches the ball, running up the left sideline. And uh, how many guys was it total? Was it three or two? Three. It was three, I think. 
But the third one it might have fell three. off. It they could three. they couldn't all hold on. It was three, man. Jump on this dude's back, and it's like, not, you know, a lot of times you see those big guys and they stiff arm them, knock them off. He just said, "Hop on, I'm running." Literally, and he I mean, literally carried these dudes down the field. And I mean, we're not talking about chumps. I mean, New Orleans D is decent. And they could not. I mean, the guy was. And he was. He already had the first down. No, he could have just fell left and fell out of bounds. None of that. He just carried them. And I mean, when you're doing that in the NFL, that is something special. I, I got to tell you, the only guy I've seen do something. I won't say like that, but to do something with that physicality is um, is Gronkowski. And I don't even know if Gronk's quite got one like that. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, and on top of all that, uh, the Saints defensive back, I think it was Williams, gets uh, he's gets a flag. He's totally holding on to his face mask. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was like a fourth and two play. He gets the first down in the, like in the flat. He caught the five. first down. It was a 30-yard play, but I'll be damned if 15, 20 of it, he wasn't ha- – he, he, the first guy that grabbed his face mask – and then he went for another 15 yards, and that was after the other two guys come crashing down on him and still carried them for about eight yards. I mean, this is, again, we share these things. This is awesome. And the reason I say Mark Bavaro, I'm going to pull up one of the old ones where he yep. did that because he used to uh, do so, that regularly. So I got over under, over under one chances that somebody tackles George Kittle above the waist for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not many, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So, uh, it was awesome. We'll post it, and it, it was good stuff. All right. So, and, you know, this rolls right into number three good of the week. Uh, would you say a little play on words? A, a little digging for gold. G-O-U-L-D. Digging for gould in New Orleans. Again, Twitter called it the game of the year between the 49ers and Saints. Uh, obviously, Robbie Gold with the game winner at the end of the game, which is why we're throwing that in there as the Saints uh, move back to really prominence, man. I mean, you know, this is coming on. Look, if any team in the NFL can walk away from a loss saying this year, saying that was the best loss of the year, that was new. That was San Francisco last week. Against Baltimore. Again, at Baltimore yep. in a 20-17 to 17 game where they slowed them down and traded blows. Um, but they are they are something. Their defense is strong. Now, it was a bit surprising. I mean, this is, you know, considering they came off a game where they held, uh, you know, the high-powered Lamar Jackson to 20 points in that offense. They are a running offense, so it's not always about quick strike. Um, but this game was... The Very opposite. high scoring. It was a I mean, shootout. You know, is what forty six, forty three? You're talking 48, about forty eight, forty six. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ninety plus points total on the board. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This was amazing, and the, I think what the best part about it was, it was never more than uh, at the end of a quarter. It was never more than what, like, uh, was it even six points? I think it was never more than like three points. No, I, I mean, think it was point. a back and forth game. They yep. were trading blows, and it was it was fun to watch. That is one of the toughest places to play, especially if you're gonna t- if you tell anybody New Orleans scores forty six at home. I don't think anybody's gonna say, no matter who they play, that they lost, and they did, and. San Francisco showed it out. It was, uh, it was very much like we talked. We talked about it with the Baltimore game. Was even though everybody kind of shut each other down, you know, everybody did everything a little bit less than their average. N- there was no mistakes in that game, and it was back and forth. Well, this was kind of a little bit the same way. It was just like I said, it was a heavyweight fight, blow for blow. Nobody was missing. They were just hitting on all cylinders. Um, and, and, again, respect to New Orleans. I mean, this makes – New Orleans has proven themselves to be a very, very real uh, contender for the Super Bowl. Like, because, again, they were right there nose-to-nose with them. Uh, but, you know, that's tough. Two games on the road, and San Francisco gets it done. I mean, we, we went in a lot of detail in the game, so we won't go too far into it. But, man, I'm, I'm digging what we're going to see in this playoffs with it's the way this be crazy. season's been going. I'm digging it. So that'll wrap up our goody goods. That's the goods. So let's go to the bad. So the bad number one, numero uno. Oops, we did it again. (sighs) 
The thing that will never die. First, we have what I guess the question is, what are we going to call this? Because we have 2.0. Is it are we going to use the same I name? Guess. We can't be original. So so 2007, the Patriots got caught filming the Jets sidelines. Of course, they denied it. It was all back and forth. No ownership of it. Big, big stink in the NFL. So then we moved to what was it? 2014. We had deflate gate. Yep. Um, where where you know the balls that they used against the Indianapolis Colts were apparently underinflated, supposedly making it easier to grip the ball. They go ahead and win the game. Blah 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 blah. So now we get to uh, this situation, and the Patriots are owning that it happened. So that's new for them because if you'll remember Tom Brady's suspension over that, they took that all the way to uh, to the. Uh, was it like a state Supreme Court yeah, or something? They, yeah. they took it to to uh, to our judicial system. So here's what happened. Uh, there was a crew there that supposedly was involved there was in a crew at the Cleveland Brown Cincinnati Bengal game. Yes. Oh, was that? Oh, yes. well, not during uh, their game. No, no. So the, the Patriots oh, yes, have yes, a coming right. game with the Bengals, and there was a crew at the Cincinnati Cleveland game. Yes. Like that guy just said, they do, the Patriots apparently do some feature called yes. Do Your Job. This is separate about, from supposedly from their football operation side, which would mean the team and that, and it was about advanced scouting. Yeah, it was about advanced scouting. So yep. you typically teams are allowed to have a scout go and watch the game of the team they're playing the following week or later in the season, however it may be. Yeah. Okay, so they're allowed to go watch the team sort of like a spectator. And so apparently they didn't notify Cincinnati, and maybe they should have, but they got approval from Cleveland for this advanced scout to come in with this basically film crew because the Patriots do some feature within their organization about people in their organization called do your job is what the guy yeah. said. And the film crew was basically there to film this advanced scout doing, yeah, doing his, his job. job. Yeah. It's a, it's a day in the life kind of, kind of video. So Go from there. So apparently the Bengals uh, had somebody there that, that witnessed this and they, uh, and so they they witnessed them filming the sidelines of the Cincinnati Bengals for an extended period of time. They see this crew doing this. So they came to the, you know, of course, they're concerned about it. And this is from a source, which I find kind of interesting, that when they went to the cameraman, Apparently, and again, this is through a source, so there's no it's not it's not owned by the by the Patriots at this point. The cameraman said, Well, can I just erase it and we'll just move on from there? Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, but yeah, apparently that, that's, that's the from NFL a source. does have the footage from the camera that was being the, the yeah. guy was recording, so that is under yeah. in review yeah. investigation. And, and mind and, you, there's there's hand signals and all these things go on when this stuff happens. So now, here's the thing is, you know, they, they obviously the deflate gate was there. Now, people believing whether that won the game or not, but they they got hit for that there. I believe Belichick was fine, like 100,000. The team was fine, like a half a million. And and Brady got his four game suspension. It was actually held over for a year. He was supposed to get it the previous year and they held it over through the court system. And he got but he got it the second year. So there's a past history here. And, you know, you're talking about a smoking gun. I mean, this is like a whole arsenal of smoking weapons. Um, it's not a good look. No, and it's only because they've had egg on their face from this before. You know, it's they're not. They are Robert Kraft and the Patriots and the relationship with Goodell and all that yep. nonsense. That's it, out the yeah, window well, well, now, and, man. And mind that you, that really is out the window because it's gonna, you know. Because it'll, quite frankly, with Goodell, it'll put him in a really bad spot. I mean, it's the boy who cried wolf. They've well, had, you, we, had problems before. Well, so you think you're about gonna, this too. You're not going to get that pass like you may think the Patriots have. No, before. and understand, you got the Robert Kraft incident that start that came yeah. through at the beginning of this year. You got a team, and let, let's face it, every team admits that they cheat to some degree. The problem I think with the Patriots is that they're going to have is that they are so blatant in some of the things that they do and even the truth is even if it's misconstrued um or inaccurate but yet the evidence is there they're not good they can't get the benefit of the doubt anymore i, I think this is going to be a big deal and you know in in reality now now you got a, a, a 
Cincinnati team that's got to go and change their hand signals in a game against the Patriots. So even if it is nothing, it's going to create a problem, which I think no matter what, the Patriots have to be penalized with. You know, the penalties can be money. Uh, I believe they were penalized with draft picks on the deflate gate too as they well. Were. So, you know, that can come into play. I think they lost the first rounder in there. So again, this stuff is uh, is getting it's getting big. Um, and it's the kind of thing that can start to really put up. I mean, even if, pay, uh, you know, Brady retires and this has nothing to do with Brady, Belichick's going to continue on. And this is going to put uh, him in a in a bad, bad light, uh, lack of control. So, again, here we go. It's this is the way it is. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, if it does, something does come of it, I, I, I kind of feel like it won't happen till later. But oh, yeah, if the NFL's got the tapes, then. You know, I don't think it should be very clear cut if there was something, some run doing, but we'll have to see. Yep. Moving on to the bad number two. Tell me if you heard this one. What would that be in reference to? The poo poo that is officiating in the NFL this season and in college, quite frankly, but most notably in the NFL. Poo poo magoo. And we had it again. Yeah. And, and, to, before we kind of get into some of the examples, it's gotten so bad the NFL has actually already made it clear that they are going to review gonna their officiating yep. standards and how they're going about officiating because they know that it has gotten so horrible. Um, and speaking of the Patriots, one of the big uh, issues this week was in the Patriots game where actually, you know, the belief is the refs are always leaning towards the Patriots. Patriots get hosed on a couple of calls this week, um, including a a fumble that should have been uh, by Travis Kelsey that should have been allowed to play out. It would have actually been a return for a score, much like we had with the Saints and the Rams earlier in the year. Um, you know, where, and again, this if they would have scored, you're talking about right now, the, the, that game was a six-point game. And they ended up getting the ball back, but instead of getting the touchdown, they had to drive 70 yards down the field, which they did not do. Yep. So the officiating continues to be a problem. Um, not just a problem, but, you know, you know, it's slowing things down. They're resorting to pulling out the laundry and throwing it rather than, you know, really kind of putting more effort, I feel like, into their job. And well, well, making I, a judgment call. And and at the end of the day, there's been a lot of these calls that have, and I feel like with the introduction of the PI review thing, which was done to, you know, help, uh, supposedly help the game, I, I feel like so, so that these basically help the game so these penalties don't have such a tremendous yeah. impact. Or, or, or these plays or lack of penalty. These penalties are having huge impacts in some games. And I'll be damned if we get to the postseason and we have It'll happen, guaranteed. We have more of these situations. Like I, I hate that that happened to the Saints a few years ago, but let's be honest. You can count maybe on one hand plays in the postseason that were that impactful, like uh, that a penalty wasn't called or something to to the nature of that that the impact was so huge it just doesn't happen usually it just works itself out well let, let me also say this the reason why the why the officiating is so bad right now is the nfl's fault it's not the officials and i'm going to go back to prior to the most recent couple of years where we've had big issues I got to look at what year it was, but it was probably within the last six or seven years. The NFL started suspending refing crews yeah, over I bad calls. That. Now, yep. here's the problem is, so now refs don't want that. What the NFL has inadvertently done is made the officiating crew a part of the game beyond, like they're almost like a team on the field. So now officials are officiating the game to stay out of the spotlight, and they're almost dragging themselves into the spotlight. And it goes back to, I mean, this recent one is is an example, like not letting, like not not making a call because if it's really egregious, I'm going to get bailed out by instant replay. Instant replay is destroying this game. Don't don't kid yourself with it, or at least the officiating side of it. It has. I can live, but I want a ref to demonstratively make a call. 
And you want to know what? If you're going to, my whole thing with pass interference is if you're going to let them play, let them play. But if all of a sudden in a big play, now you're going to scrutinize all my calls, like you're putting these refs in horrible, horrible situations. And the simple fact is they are, they are playing to what it, it's their job security too. It's just like an NFL player. It's to their job security. So they are going to start calling the game for their own job. So it's not about calling the game right. It's about calling the game to protect myself. And that has made for worse and worse officiating. Um, the rules are getting so ambiguous. I mean, honestly, it goes back to even the catch rule. Yeah. And the tuck rule. You can go back to some of these big things that we just made all these crazy plays. Now, the one I will never get is if there's a turnover, let the play play out. Like, I don't get the quick whistle, and the Patriots game was a quick whistle, and the um, and the Saints game was a quick whistle, and both of those were touchdowns that would have changed the complexion of, at the time, what would have been an important game. I mean, how much would the would the Saints like that game back against the Rams right now with how mm-hmm. close it's tightened up? So we continue to see it. It's ruining the game. And don't even get into what it's done to the, to the challenges and the timeouts. It's killed the challenge. And another example was because of that missed call with Kelsey, the Patriots were forced to use a challenge. And that challenge, they got it, but it was their last challenge. So there was a play with Nikhil Henry – Harry, excuse me, Harry, that was a missed call in the Patriots. He didn't step out of bounds and would have scored a touchdown, and they didn't have another challenge to use. Mm. So that's where they got double hit. That's two touchdowns that it cost them in this game. And it's and this is the point is that that kind of stuff is taking away from the game. I'll be honest with you. If you're going to have replay, I wish they would just go to college because if they catch a replay before the next play, why is it the coach's f- problem that the refs made a mistake? Let the, let the officiating side of it fix the officiating side. I don't have a problem with the challenge, but do you notice in college we don't have this challenge issue because plays that are obvious or missed, they can't get them. And you know what? If you can get up and snap the ball fast enough to avoid that, it's hard to do. Then you know what? Call it what it is. It's fine. But that if the whole point of the game is to have accuracy in the game, your rules are totally set against that. So I'm sorry I went on a little bit of a rant, but that's – nonsense and once again it screwed up football after they supposedly fixed it all it 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 just it's a mess and this is the nfl's fault mr goodell i'm looking at you you friggin' dumb ape in a suit you're an idiot and once again you continue to be an idiot and all your cronies underneath you all right let's get on to the next thing next bad sorry unless you got something to add i got a little angry no you got i'm just I, i i okay Okay. Goodell's an idiot. So number three, I'd rather golf. Yeah. I'd rather be golfing. Either way. And this is in reference to the AFC South. Will the division winner, please stand up, (laughs) Houston at home, what should be an easy enough game against a Denver team that's not so great. Starting for his second time. Rookie quarterback. And they get blown out by the Broncos. Indianapolis. I mean, blown Indianapolis out. Indianapolis gets their starting running back, Marlon Mack, back. I know they've been suffering with injuries, but they've been holding on tight. Frank Reich's been doing a great job. They go down to Tampa Bay with a team that can sling it, but... Uh, you know, a very beatable team. Team with a terrible secondary. And they lose. And mind you, Jameis was generous. He threw three picks. It, yes, he was. He was giving. It was Christmas and that season MVP for him. was supposed to be good. And then you have Tennessee all of a sudden. Dis- you know, now granted, the move to Tannehill has, it has a lot to do with it. Yep. Starts to come on out of nowhere and make this a three-headed race in the AFC South as they go to uh, Oakland and, you know, it was game first half, and then they come out the second half and absolutely slapped them in the face with their Johnson. Very, And now they are all neck and neck, and there will be a few games between each other. 
and it's certainly not the NFC least, but we say, you know, we'd rather be golfing because, you know, you see a team a couple of weeks ago, it looked like, well, the Coke. Col- know, we Colts were in the was, driver's seat. We thought it was Houston most of the season, but then we see, you know what? The Colts look like the team. And then the Houston takes them. But it is Houston. They're the team. And now here we come, Tennessee. I mean, like, which team? Who, who's it going to be, folks? Who is it going to be? It just seems like they'd rather golf instead of playing in the playoffs. Uh, you better charge up the battery on the old golf cart. So the good part about this, unlike the NFC East, is that uh, we'll have the Titans. Or, yeah, the Titans and the Texans get two of the last three games head-to-head. So at least will be played out on the field. Maybe it's certainly more interesting to watch than, than the Eagles play Dallas. <laughs> Yeah, that's for certain. That's for certain. But, uh, yeah, that lap, bleh, that wraps up the bad. So now it's on to the ugly. Chivalry is dead in New England. Chivalry is dead in New England. Why poor, is it dead? Poor Brittany Matthews. Brittany, Brittany, Brittany. Tell me what happened to Brittany. You know who Brittany is? I believe she is dating somebody special. Brittany Matthews is the girlfriend of Mr. Patrick Mahomes, who attended the game between the Chiefs and the Patriots at Gillette Stadium. Uh, She was there uh, along with, I think it was uh, Mahomes' brother is who it was. And um, harassment ensues. Pretty looking girl, obviously so. It's Patrick Mahomes' girlfriend. Um, I don't know what the brother really looks like or anything. I'm sure in the situation they're, they're in, he's not looking to come to her defense and throw down. He'd rather just be like, grab her and let's get the hell out of here. But apparently, as soon as they sat down, there was a drunk dude that was like, hey, everyone, this is Patrick Mahomes' his girlfriend and brother. Let's give him shit. This will be fun. And, uh, yeah, they they did. They continued the, like the whole time to give them a hard time until security had to come in and move them to a safe place. Literally, it now, became that now, vile. Now, ma- now, mind you, this okay? Just think about the logic of this. You know, if you've ever sat in the upper deck in any football stadium, that's a lot of times where the the boozers hang out, and it can get a little raucous in certain stadiums. But we're t- Patrick Mahomes is getting his his lady a good seat. These are seats around a lot of season ticket holders and people that, you know, hopefully are acting, you know, a little bit better than uh, than the casual fan up in the top. And this crap goes on all the time, unfortunately. And, you know, I don't care about this all, you know, women coming, you know, need to be treated like men kind of thing. There's respect that you have for ladies in this world and just respect for your opponent. And there's no point in pointing this out and making someone feel uncomfortable. So New England gets another black eye in this whole saga. Not a good week for uh, the, now, the New Englanders in the past. As if teams need and other fan bases need a reason not to like New England. This one really sucks. So ugly on you, New England. Way to go. There you go. All right, ugly number two for the week. And I remember when I got this, I flung it right to you. I was like, ha, ha, ha. I thought you grabbed it. No, you got it. No, 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 wait a minute. But but I thought you got it. You told me you got it. No, 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 dude. That's your, those are yours. I got the other ones. What do you mean the other ones? There are no other ones. There's just these. These are the things we need to play the game. I thought you got it. No. Whatever. Stop blaming me. You're the boss. So hit us with it, Dave. So if you didn't hear, um, another game involving New England Patriots. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's time for the Chiefs. Yeah. The, the Chiefs equipment team, they chartered a flight, had to, uh, had to had to stop in New York. I believe in Newark. Or no, it ended up in Newark. Sorry. Um, forgot to grab all the bags with the players' equipment. Didn't realize it the night before, until afterward, after the flight had already moved and the equipment was on there. They had 35 players, helmets, shoulder pads, <laughs> didn't make it. They had to figure out how to reroute these things. 
The ETA on it was 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Game starts at 4.30. Yeah, good talk, Ross. If the equipment would not have been there on time, they would have had to forfeit the game. I, I, when is the last been... time somebody would have forfeited an NFL? I don't even know if that's ever happened. If I don't it has, know. it's been years. I don't know. <laughs> but Somebody definitely amazingly, would have lost their job. I'll it was that. so funny that they were breaking into the 1 o'clock games at about 2.30, 2.45 to yeah. show the guys racing the equipment down the It has made it. The stadium. The equipment is here. So equipment managers, and understand, this isn't like old school where you had one like 80-year-old guy that was like, you know, Uncle Nick that used to like just grab the equipment. You have teams worth of people to do this. And... Man, they look dumb. <laughs> yeah, look dumb. <laughs> real bad look. Real bad look. It was hilarious, though. Again, makes our ugly this week just because, I mean, when it, I, I got the notification, I was like, oh, my goodness, excuse my language, but you have got to be shitting me a solid. <laughs> I mean, this is just, this could be one of mo- the more hilarious things I've ever seen. I mean, what, what would they have done? It, I know. that. I, I just, things you don't hear and are totally worth talking about. Either way, the game got played. Um Mahomes got his revenge on New England's horrible treatment, and they won the game. But uh, that is an oh shit moment. There, <laughs> if you go. there was one. That's correct. I hope nobody lost their job. But wouldn't be shocked if someone did. So that wraps that number two up. What do we got for number three? Uh, the turd that won't flush. Man, my butt is pasty. I've used too much TP. And the turd and the excrement won't flush, a.k.a. the Cleveland Browns. So, Cleveland just can't get off these the bad or the ugly. They just can't. Uh, we said at the beginning of the year that with all these people they assembled, they brought in all these personalities between Baker Mayfield, OBJ, the obvious ones. This is a team that started off the season horribly involved with the uh, – uh, Miles Garrett incident. I mean, they, 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 you know, they've just Baker Mayfield throwing interceptions like he's handing out candy at Halloween. It just, it, it's been ugly. So Kitchens last week made it with the t shirt. I mean, on and on and on. So you'd think that this team, if anything, would just say, let's just wear regular shirts and not talk to the media. Can't help themselves what do they do this week what's the fun stuff uh well first of all you know there was new odell beckham last week's talking about he doesn't know about his future with cleveland yeah it was very vague about a contract he's like oh he's all in on cleveland yep but he's had and then all of a sudden he's had this abdominal injury was it that has been he just hasn't been able to get right and then you know there came out that you know he felt like the medical staff for Cleveland and well, and, he didn't say anything. Well, well Baker comes out yes. and says, spills the beans. Yes, says that he doesn't feel like the injury was managed correctly. And then I'll let you cap off, put the cherry on top with Mr. Odell Beckham in this situation. Yeah. So Baker Mayfield has has uh, put his foot in his mouth many a time going even back to Oklahoma. So we, we already got that out there. We remember he blasted the reporter earlier this year, just all kinds of nonsense. So of course this thing comes out. Then we get these sources this week, sources everywhere that says OBJ has been out on the field in November. The question is who he said this to, but apparently it may have been said to more than one team that he's telling other coaches and players on other teams during games, come and get me. Wow, Mr. Come Beckham. Come and get me. What if he ends up coming back to New York, but we pay less money? Woo! Uh, I don't think you will. I, I got to be honest with you. He's not Antonio Brown crazy, but he brings all the fun stuff along with the prima donna this was supposed receiver. To be it. The young, yep, hot yep. quarterback in Mayfield. He's over there. He's got a backfield with Chubb, and now he's got Kareem Hunt back there. They got a tight end, Joku, his best bud, Jarvis Landry's playing next to him. He's got players scattered all over the defense that have been first, second round draft picks by the Browns over the past decade. This was it. Yep. This was the spot. He was going to flourish. Well, I let, love you, OBJ. Let, let me just say, OBJ, I want you to go and do a little research on a certain player. 
because you're really following in his footsteps. I need you to go look at a guy named Brandon Marshall. Everywhere that dude's gone, at the beginning, he's all rainbows and sunshine of every trip. And at the end, it's always someone else's fault. Look in the mirror, bro. Look in the mirror. I'm sorry you're ultra talalented, and unfortunately, you're a mental midget. Yeah, I, and, it's, it is sad a little bit for me though because I just, I, yeah, I, it, you know, I told you how I felt about it. I didn't like that move. Now that we've gone through the year, I still believe, and this makes it even more so that you know we probably got the best end of that deal. I like Jabril Peppers, you know, I like Zeitler. But I still love OBJ, but this is this is no but, good. But I go back to <laughs> explosive receiver personality with a young I quarterback. I get it, bro. I get it. And I get it. Unfortunately, I believe you me, I think his best chance at success would have been to stay in the jo- with the Giants. He could still have but, his drama, but like him moving to Cleveland and potentially moving on or wherever he's going, it's just the drama is going to escalate nope. much like it did with AB. But, he right. went once he left like the place he knew, all of a sudden he became like, you know, and people were paying all this money for him and you know, all of a sudden his head got too Well, big remember for him. remember where he really wore out his welcome in in New York to me was it wasn't all the antics near the especially near the end it was the contract thing all these guys want their money antonio brown wanted to get paid right you know they all want to get paid and you got to remember the teams that can afford you with those big with those big salaries are not the best teams in the league Correct. they're generally rebuilding and so you go to them and if you want to th- if you think you are the focal point of an offense well, you damn well better be. And you want to know what? He's not. He, he needed to create his own opportunities this year. He needed to make Baker Mayfield better. And yet he blames Baker Mayfield for not making him better. He blamed New York for not giving him his respect. He blamed Eli for not being able to get the ball out to him last year. It's all about blame. And the whole thing is you are getting what you want. And all it's going to take is one more failed stop and you become – AB, Brandon Marshall, the guy that everybody hopes can turn it, turn it around and get rid of his attitude and never can. And so, but this is the Browns and I'll admit like he's got a problem. He's got a quarterback that is immature and doesn't play within himself very well. He's got a head coach that is completely in over his head right now. And you're the guy that's you for that kind of money. You're supposed to be the glue, not the sledgehammer. And that's what he is. He's a sledgehammer taking it apart. He always has been, though. Yep. He always so, has been. So, so we'll the Browns s- just can't get off this list. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, to be honest, they've the success they've had has really not been due to him. So if the, he ends up being gone, I mean, I don't think they'll fall off any further than they are. But No, we'll the best receiver to- on their team is not named OBJ. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, we uh, scoured the internet to see if we could find uh, something worthy of the celly of the week for our celebration of the week, but we really didn't have one. Everybody kind of Disappointed. scored. Disappointed. That's a and, fave. And, 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 and took care of business this week. We didn't see anything that stood out. So uh, we will wrap the good, the bad, and the ugly from NFL Week 14 recap with that one. We'll get this up at you. We'll get you a little preview for Week 15. We'll keep it rolling. Hopefully... We will uh, get you some high school football, some recruiting stuff here uh, before the first early signing period next week. We also got our end of the year awards coming up, though. Our awards, our O U R in quotes, uh, and uh, that's we'll do those for NFL, college, and fantasy. Some will cross over with, you know, the national media perspective on uh, the awards we have, but we make them fun on our own. And some won't. Some are just what we think. So how do you like that? We appreciate you listening. As always, we'll see you next time on the Gridiron. Have a lovely day.